Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for today's uh, webinar. Hopefully, everybody is connected and can hear me okay. Uh, my name is Michal. Uh, I'll be moderating the webinar today and looking after everybody. Uh, joining me on the call is my colleague, Scott. Uh, can you hear us okay, Scott? Yes, I can. Thanks. Excellent. We're, we're, we're through the, the tech check, um, which is brilliant. So, uh, folks, you're very welcome. Uh, today, we're going to talk about controlling your project requests uh, and your pipeline th with Microsoft 365. Um, so I guess we're just going to talk about how to start the right projects at the right time. And we're going to do it um, through the lens of our project management solution, Brightwork 365. Um, we have loads to get through today. Just before we dive in, I have one or two housekeeping items. We're assuming and we're hoping that you've lots of questions. If you do have any questions, please do add them to the questions panel in GoToWebinar. So you might need to expand it out. Uh, for me, it's on the right hand side of my screen. I'm not sure how it presents for you. But if you expand it out with a little arrow and you can type your questions in there, we will get to as many questions as we can after Scott has uh, gone through the slides in a little demonstration. So if you want to try that out there and say hello, um, feel free. And as I said, you can add your questions in there throughout the webinar. Secondly, this webinar is being recorded, so don't worry too much about taking any notes. We will send out a recording via email tomorrow through one of our colleagues, and you can feel free to share it with any of your colleagues who might find it interesting or go back and look over something you might have missed, but that will go out tomorrow. So don't worry too much about taking notes, as I said. So for now, I might just hand over, to, I might just jump straight in, Scott. I might let you take over from here, if that's okay. And I'm on hand sure, to help out any polls and questions. Okay, very good. Well, thank you, Michal. And uh, you are all very welcome to today's webinar, Control Your Project Request Pipeline with Microsoft 365. Now, I'm the... VP of Customer Success with Brightwork, and our goal is to help customers with project management process support, planning, training, and the implementation of the Brightwork 365 Project Portfolio Management Solution. In today's webinar, we'll demonstrate how you can leverage project request management capabilities and roll-up reporting to implement project portfolio governance in Brightwork 365. Now, briefly, what, what is Brightwork 365? Well, it's a power app built on the Microsoft 365 Power Platform, and it's focused exclusively on project and portfolio management that delivers process and functionality immediately, so you can start quickly and have cross-project and portfolio visibility. And it allows you to re evolve and mature at your own pace. Now, the way we uh, you will be able to, to start and evolve quickly is supported by our Brightwork project management success approach. Now, first, Brightwork 365 includes configurable templates that support requests and project management built into our product. So today, we will be focused on the project request management part of that. And second, our deployment services ensure you can start quickly and evolve as you use the solution. Now, before we get started, uh, we'd like to take a quick poll just to get some information. It's really helpful to us to know what it is you are looking at. And are you using Microsoft 365 for everyday productivity? So, Michal, if you could go ahead and start that poll, and we'll we'll see how sure. this goes for the next. I've actually tweaked the poll a little bit, Scott. I hope you don't mind. I said, are we sure. using Microsoft 365 for project management? Slight, slight little tweak on, on the on the question. Um, I I think that improves the question actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of helpful to know who we're talking to. Um, you know, some people, a lot of people are using Microsoft 365. But they they mightn't have actually considered using it for their projects. You know, they might be using Outlook or, or Office or something like that, but it, it's kind of, and it's interesting to see the responses. So, you know, 30% of people have said, yes, I am. And 60% of people have said, 
no, but I'm, I'm, I'm considering it, which, mm -hmm. which means that, that folks are in the right place at least. So I'm just going to let this run for another maybe 10 seconds or so, folks. We appreciate uh, taking the time to, um, appreciate you taking the time to answer because we find it very interesting. Oh, and there it goes. Thank you very much, folks. I, I think that was me. I, I hit the wrong button there. So that's okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right. Moving on to. So the agenda, here's the agenda for today's session. First, why do you need project request management? And then I'll present the various templates and processes that Brightwork 365 has to support project and portfolio governance. And I'll show you a practical example of how you can get visibility on the project pipeline, both as you're going through requests and as you're executing projects. And our last topic will be focused on starting the right, right project at the right time uh, using best practice templates. And uh, we will have, as, as Michal mentioned, a Q&A section after the demonstration so that we can answer as many questions as you have. So just a couple of slides here. Here we have a, def a definition of project portfolio governance. And it's essentially saying you need to have a process in place for collecting and ranking all potential projects and weighing them up against the stated strategic goals of the organization. Now, just because someone has an idea for a project, it doesn't mean it should happen regardless of where it came from. Now, that's what project portfolio governance is all about, ensuring projects have a strategic fit with the organization. And it's about having the processes in place to ensure that projects are delivering value to the organization. And secondly, project portfolio governance provides a mechanism to track project progress. Strong project portfolio governance will give you the visibility to know how projects are doing and know when the projects go off track. Now, two ways to establish project portfolio governance in Brightwork 365 are, first, make sure projects are aligned with the strategic objectives of the organization. To achieve this balance in an objective way, you need a project request management process. And having a process to manage new project requests helps you manage the whole pipeline. And for new requests to ranking, uh, to ranking criteria and then creating a new project from that. And Brightwork 365 is designed to manage the process, which provides the tools and structure you need to manage the pipeline of new projects. The second aspect is having a reporting structure that provides visibility across all projects that are underway. Now, Brightwork 365 supports a hierarchical project structure based on portfolios and programs, and I'll be showing you how that works in the demo. A project can be managed in Brightwork 365 as a hub for all project-related tasks and reports, actions, issues, changes, things like that. And you can report across all the projects in a portfolio dashboard. Now, with the process of request management specifically, project request management is set up to support a process that is configurable for each project type from those that don't need any approval, zero stage, to uh, some that need three stages of approval. At any stage, a request can be sent back to the previous step for more information. This ensures stakeholders can track the progress of a project request through the process of drafting, accepting, reviewing, ranking, and approving. All requests and their status can be tracked in the request area. And once a request is approved, the relevant manager can, can use the original request to launch a new project, carrying over key information to the project. And this ensures the new project has the strategic alignment information that was utilized in the governance process and the decision. Okay. So now I'm going to go into a live demo of Brightwork 365. So give me a second here to go to the right place. Okay. 
So here in uh, 365, I'm going to go ahead to the request areas, and you'll see that Brightwork 365 is broken into requests, projects, and portfolios. And this is that structure I told you about. You can have many portfolios. Uh, in this case, we have, have four of them here. And then within a portfolio, you can have several programs. So in our example here, the, the, the portfolio is the organization. And then under the organization, we have company operations, product development, customer success, marketing. And then within the programs, you would have a set of projects that are ongoing here. So that is the structure of it. And if we go back over to the requests, we'll see that we have a pipeline of requests in here. Some of them have been completed. Some of them are in are open right now. And the example I'm going to use is one that I've taken through uh, some of this process. So here we have a, a project. It's related to company operations. We want to upgrade the primary server blade hardware at the data center in the US, uh, two data centers, one and two. And here is the form that a, request, a requester would fill in to provide the information that is needed to make a decision about this particular project. And this can be, uh, this is what's out of the box, but it can be enhanced, uh, adjusted, and uh, more things added to it to give you the information you need to, to make an uh, that decision, including strategic alignment. What are the objectives? Is there any risk involved in this project? Uh, what's out of scope or what's considered out of scope and what's the economic impact? So this is a starting point. There also could be documentation that could be loaded to the request to support what you want to do there. Now there's a process that this particular request went through from draft and then it was submitted. Someone reviewed it to accept it and then it went for approval. And all along the way, there were notifications made to the individuals involved in the process. Here the approver got an email and then the requester was informed of what happened with the request. From draft to accepted and it was accepted and there's even some commentary. And then the next stage for full approval went to the, to the appropriate people and then there was another notification. It was accepted, uh, approved, project can proceed as planned. All of this is captured in the request in the form of a history trail of who did, uh, who submitted it, who were the approvers, and the approvals can be managed uh, by the right, uh, people with the right roles and permissions in the system. So you have an approvals coordinator, that was me, and then uh, the account I'm using now for this demo was set up as the accept uh, reviewer to accept it and the approver. So depending on the uh, sophistication of how many cycles you want to go through, it could go through a three-stage or a two-stage approval or a three-stage approval as I showed in the diagram, then you would have a, a way in which to as assign and set up the approval process. It also brings in information over here for who's going to be the project manager, the, pro the project sponsor, again, the portfolio and program, what type of project it's going to be. And then once it's accepted and approved, a project would be created from this request. And a lot of this information would then transfer over there. So now when we look at the requests in total, we have various views of seeing where these requests are in the process. We've got uh, open requests, and then we might have uh, all requests, approved requests, and various other views. Along with that, there is reporting so that you can see that requests were uh, submitted by these individuals and um, let's see what's a good one requests by 
program. And then you can bring this out and then start to drill in on this. So these were the various programs that were set. Company operations has quite a few of those. And let's say I want to drill into that one. And I'm just going to use status as a uh, as an attribute. Let's see. Request status. And I'm going to just make that a chart. So now we're seeing the different aspects of how these were broken out. So uh, that's part of the visibility on the project, on the uh, request process, all done through dashboards. And from there, we move over to the project, the portfolio projects that are ongoing. So these are approved requests. And now they are active projects. And a, a same kind of concept where you have views of projects, either in progress, not started, all projects. Our particular project is this hardware upgrade project. So from the uh, request information, we the description came over, uh, the objectives, the overall risk, the economic impact, all came over. We can select a priority. We can establish some other things about this project that are important. What are the approval requirements and things like that? But we also have all the different aspects of project management here in which to manage this project, including what's the status of the project, uh, who's on the team, what are the stages that this project is going to go through, it's going to go through four stages. The actual project plan, and this is the schedule. And so this is something where we can start to assign people and put resource, uh, assign resources to it, and that'll also uh, allow you to look at reporting from there. Documents and other things, actions, issues, risks. You could track costs. Uh, you can track your communications logs and things like that. And if there are any approvals, that need to be uh, to go through for the stages, uh, they can be managed as well. That brings us back to the portfolio view. And here we have a, a kind of a stoplight view of how these projects are doing. We can focus in on those that are that are not doing well. Um, other dashboards in the portfolio view can be seen here. There's a projects dashboard, which would associate projects again by portfolio and program, by health, by project manager, uh, some other things. And then we also have very robust portfolio reporting that, to give us insight into how our projects are doing that are underway. And this is an example of, the, of a portfolio dashboard that looks at all the projects that are in action and gives us some key information about them, their duration, their, pro their progress, how many tasks, how many late tasks, are they getting a lot of issues, uh, what's their active stage, who's responsible for them. And I could drill in on some of this. For example, um, company operations. If I just want to see what are the projects that are, are involved in the company operations, and there's our, there's our project right there that we just put in recently. Uh, and I have other ways of selecting this. There's also an individual project report that allows you to select the project and look at what's going on there in terms of uh, where is the project in terms of, of health, cost, time, scope, what are the uh, items that are ongoing in the, in the project right now, risks, tasks, issues, actions, what assignments are out there and other metrics about the project itself. There's also a way to look at, at a portfolio timeline. How do these projects stack up in terms of, of their execution with the, uh, across the entire organization? And whether there's, there's uh, so much overlap that we need to start being concerned about this, things like that. Um, there's also a way to look at the individual schedules of specific projects. 
without having to to get into that that Gantt view, but just seeing an overall picture here. Now, some of the other reporting that comes out of this as a result of the portfolio is especially key and important would be how are the resources being utilized? Do we have any issues that we have to take a look at? I look at Jim here. Jim's got 80 hours planned for a particular week. And of course, there's only, it was a short week. There's only 32 hours available. So there's a problem there and I could even drill into that and see, well, all right, so here are the assignments and uh, you know why, why were they overbooked here? But it looks like Jim's got a problem across various projects, same thing with Dan. But this all comes from the centralized and portfolio roll-up of the information across all the individual projects. So just a quick recap, we took a look at requests and how you can set up a, a system and a process to manage requests and capture the key information in order to make informed decisions and carry it through a process that involves all the right people in the right places to, to do that. And then we also have a look across the portfolio of active projects to keep track of how they're doing and how they're making progress. So I'm gonna come back now. And at this point, Uh, we're going to open it up for questions. So, Neil, I'm going to bring you back, and let's open up the questions, and we'll we'll do uh, we'll do as much as we can. I think we have time for. We absolutely have time. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. folks, you can hear me, okay, Scott? Can you? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, folks, that was that was great. Um, so, as I said before, you can add your questions in um, in Go to Webinar with the questions panel. Um, while you're taking your time to, to have a think about any questions that you might want, I'm just gonna pop a quick link into the, um, the chat here. So what we saw there was kind of a high level view of Brightwork 365, I guess. Um, and it might kind of just kind of pique your interest, but you might wanna know more about it and you might even wanna see a custom kind of demo of how Brightwork 365 might solve your problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop in a form, there you go, where you can request a live demo. So it's the one on the left uh, as you go onto that web page. And we can organize a call where we can go through Brightwork 365 and address your specific project management concerns. So let me just see, is there any questions? Janique has a question here. So this portfolio app gets the info from projects implemented with, oh, and I lost my question. Yeah, yeah with uh, the MS project. project. MS project, thank you, Scott. Um, the, the answer to that is no. What I was showing you was, and I'm gonna come back to the, uh, let's come back to it now. What I was showing you is that this is all self-contained. Uh, Mia, I think there's a little bit of a, a echo there. So this is a, a scheduling engine within the tool that works very similar to Microsoft Project, but you can import uh, you can port your elements into this and set them up in terms of dependencies. Um, and those dependencies can be of the, the four different types, just very similar to project. Uh, you can also tie resources, although uh, this will give you re, uh, resource allocation utilization information. It will not, it's not a resource driven schedule uh, like Microsoft Project might do. But you have also the ability to do baselines, uh, see critical path, and um, use this, it's, it's also interactive. So if I adjust things, I'm adjusting the duration here. Let's say I'm going to 15 days on that. It has an immediate impact on the rest of the schedule because it's linked through the, the predecessors uh, and the dependencies. So 
it's very similar to that, but it is it is, does not require Microsoft Project to to run the scheduling. Next question. Okay. Sure. And let me know if my microphone starts uh, echoing again. I'm going to mute myself in between. Um, Anyo has a question about Microsoft environments. So they want to know, can the project manager and the sponsor operate in separate Microsoft environments? I, I think it's all the same, is it? It is, yes. Um, it's it's under the Microsoft 365 environment. You're You're working in a dedicated environment where this solution has been set up there it has a uh, you know a specific url that people will go to and then they can go to the information that makes sense to them based on the role that they're playing in the process if they're approvers they'll be able to to access everything uh, around the approval process if they're working with if they're sponsors and they're working with the projects they'll be able to go to that. So it, it is role-based and there are role-based permissions based on uh, what it is you need to do in there. If you're uh, a team member, it might be that all you'll be interested in is, um, you know, this My Work um, interface. In fact, here, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to very quickly here make myself somebody else here. And so I'm going to take on the role of Dan and I'm going to impersonate them. So when I come into this My Work, now I can see I've got all of this. Uh, this might be my interface with, with, the, uh, with the system and I can work with a particular item and mark it and so on. I think, I think this is a permissions question more than anything, um, Scott. Mm -hmm. So I think this is really helpful to show the different, um, you know, the different sides. Right, and I think uh, he had a uh, Enrico. Uh, oh, any question? Enio had a yeah. He had a follow up question. Uh, does it require licenses? Um, yes. So there's the Microsoft licenses subscriptions that you would need to use Power Apps. And then there is the license that you would need to use Brightwork 365. And what about the requester? The requester does not need a, a Brightwork 365 license, but they would need a, a, a subscription to use Power Apps. But there is a, 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 a setup and a, a set of security roles in there so that requesters only uh, uh, can come in here and, and submit any requests, uh, but the only licensing they would need would be access to the Power Platform itself. Yeah, I, th I think clarifying the permiss permissions is, is important for a lot of people. Um, you know, they, they, they might be kind of concerned that some critical information might become accessible to a wider audience. So your, your, the security of your project data is very important to people, obviously. Yes. Um, Thank you, Anya, and I, I'm glad that cleared up um, your request. So, folks, we, we, we don't have a huge amount more questions, so I'm just going to give a final call on that. Um, Janique, who asked a question earlier, apologies if I'm butchering your name. Um, I know you had trouble logging on earlier, um, and they, they're curious, is this a Microsoft product? So, Brightwork 365 is built on Microsoft 365. Um, so, we use the Microsoft 365 Power Apps and a couple other things. So I think, I hope that kind of clears that up as well. Is that, is, is that fair to say, Scott? Yeah, it's, it's um, Brightwork 365 is built on the Power Platform suite of services that's offered through Microsoft 365. Um, it, it is a Power app, so it, it works in the Power Platform. It integrates with Outlook and Office productivity tools as well as Teams and Power Automate, and I showed you Power BI as well. So it's it's an integrated system. And uh, so Brightworks 365 works within the Microsoft environment, and it's built on that. That's as good a way to end a webinar uh, as any, Scott. Um, okay. 
folks, thanks a million for um, for everything today and for logging on and joining us and for your questions as well. Um, on the next slide, Scott, I think, do we have some contact details for our colleague Adam? Yeah, so if, if Braver 365 is something that you're interested in, um, or you maybe you just want to even hear more about it, um, you're not so sure yet, but some things you found quite interesting. Um, Adam's the first port of call on this. Um, so Adam will be reaching out to you tomorrow to send out the recording, but we do have his contact details here if you want to reach out in the meantime. So um, keep an eye out for that tomorrow. And look at folks, thanks again. Have a great rest of your day and hopefully we'll be chatting to you soon. Thank you, Scott, for all your, your work today as well. Well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate you taking the time and we look forward to talking with you in the future. Great day, folks. Great day, Chat to you soon.